Welcome to the STL Awards. This is uh, an episode where basically I just went down a rabbit hole, so to speak. It is um, it's something I wanted to do for a while. I've been looking at a lot of different of these uh, companies and uh, who should you um, who should you subscribe to? Who, you know what what do they offer? This is by no means an exhaustive list. I'm doing my best, but uh, this is really my first impression of everything. And this was prompted by um, one page rules setting up this uh, this creators tab right here. <clears throat> and so there are creators here that um, can't really see, but they have a creators tab. Let me just bring this down a little bit. There we go. And yeah, so they've got star creators and they've got verified creators that uh, have their own list. So when you click on them, you can look at their army books and all their stats are, are there. You can look at all the units, uh, what's going on. You don't have to put them in there. So I think that's fantastic. I'm, I'm super excited about uh, what they're doing. And so I, I got to look at a lot of these different companies and basically broke them down into categories of, uh, of different genres, so to speak, of what you would want out of a, a company that sells STLs that you can print on your printer. So let's get started. <clears throat> uh, first category is Best Proxy for Warhammer 40K. Uh, the winner, in my opinion, right now, and I know this is, this is probably going to be the most controversial, and I hope you guys don't uh, give up on me on this video. I do have limited experience in this. I'm sure there's a better company than who I picked, but I have a reason for who I picked, and I picked Daka Daka Store. I know they're going through something right now, but they're the system that they had before they had their troubles was very good and i'll explain why so they're eight dollars a month right now you can get them cheap because they are not doing so hot uh, some of their artists left left them in the lurch and so their their um, subscription service is in a state of flux i hope they go back to what they used to have where it was four months and they give you three full armies and it was very compliant with what 40k puts out. Uh, Seventy dollars for merchants. You know, if you've got a lot of STLs through them, that's kind of worth it. Otherwise, I'm not so sure. Yeah, subscriptions are a bit of a mess, but Kickstarter is where it's at. So if you check out their their Kickstarters, they give you know if you get in an early bird, at least the the uh, Alpha Legion one that just came out, I think in November, uh, thirty dollars got a whole army looks really good I, I like it and i was very pleased for just thirty dollars i mean if you if you have a subscription for ten dollars for three months there's your army so i thought it was a very good deal and um that's why i have daka daka here they have pretty much all the weapons that that you would have in a 40k game they look like 40k so if we take a look at uh you could see their their style is very much like a 40k army <clears throat> and then they have their uh, kickstarters over here and they're they're really dedicated to 40k so uh, and what's really nice is that they set up armies that are dedicated to the um, detachment uh, the legion you know you don't have to put on extra stuff although they do have the bits that you could put on there but they make the whole model like the uh uh, Space Wolves and the Alpha Legion and the Sisters of Battle and so forth, and then they've got regular guys that you get on your um, your week your monthly subscription. Uh, but they're not doing what I really liked before was where they had um, a whole ar three whole armies in four months. Um, so yeah, the the past few months have been a little underwhelmed. But I mean, look, they had salamanders you know chaos marines imperial guard uh 
the Dark Elves, the, the Eldar. Uh, it, they just had a, all the stuff that you would want in um, in 40K. So they, they do a good job there, and that's that's why I went with them. Okay? And so <clears throat> if you like Space Marines, Sisters of Battle, Imperial Guard, these are the guys for you. All right, best proxy for Warhammer. I don't think it's going to be as controversial as the other one. And my choice was Highland Miniatures. Now, Highland Miniatures uh, is not really a, you know, Daka Daka and Highland Miniatures. Daka Daka did put out a couple of their armies on OPR, but Highland Miniatures doesn't. I don't think they have to because they are completely compliant with um, with the uh, Warhammer and OPR as it is. It's twelve fifty a month. It's the closest sculpts I've seen to Games Workshop. So if you like Games Workshop, you're going to love Highland Miniatures. I'll show you in a second. They seem to finish an army in a timely manner. They don't go like OPR or how Daka Daka used to, where they would put out an army consecutively over several months and finish the army before moving on to a different one. They'll put out Bretonia, Bretonia, then orcs, then something else, then come back to Bretonia, and then come back to orcs. They go back and forth, but they go back within a couple of months. So that's why I give them the nod over somebody like Titan Forge. All right. All right. Before I get there, let me uh, just show you Highland Miniatures. You could see their models are one to one when it comes to Warhammer Fantasy, uh, Age of, of Fantasy. They are. They stick with the program. I don't see them deviating too much, and they cover all the units that, that I know of in Warhammer Fantasy. So uh, they're really good. They, they're working on Bretonians right now, orcs and goblins. They have dwarves. They have, um, I think, the uh, Tomb Kings. Uh, so let's take a look here. <clears throat> I remember somebody said, here are the orcs. And orcs are a good example. So let's take a look. If you take a look at the orcs, you could see their sculpts remind you tremendously of, let's see if it pops up here. Come on, yeah, Games Workshop. Very, very close, same style. So that's why <clears throat> I give them the nod when it comes to um, looking a lot like Games Workshop. All right, best models for Grim Dark Future, and this is a separate category. This is the original army that's not in Games Workshop. If you're somebody that wants to break away from Games Workshop and and come up with your your own army, kind of like uh, how rat um, the space rats are for uh, OPR or the Eternal Dynasties or something, uh, these are the this. There are some companies that just go off and do their own original armies, and then put it into OPR with that uh, program that I just showed you. And I got to say, for Grimdark Future, Arch Villain gets my vote. Uh, they are $10 a month. They, they do both fantasy and sci-fi, but we're focused on sci-fi right now. If you want fantasy and D&D, &D, then you pay $14. You pay $20 if you want everything in it, and $100 for merchants. You're paying a lot of money, but you are getting unbelievable models let me let me just pull it up here look at these i mean i i'd have to say they are the coolest looking models of everything that i've seen so let's pull up some of these sci-fi uh just so detailed i mean if you got a good resin printer you know what you're doing you love painting you're going to go crazy over these these models. They're so, I mean, everybody's talented here. It's just I'm I'm so impressed by every all these models. But Arch Villain, you know, the only thing really holding them back is um, having the uh, the armies already in OPR. They're supposed to. That's why I kind of went with them here because they are going to um, start bringing out their their armies, <clears throat> excuse me. There was one that they came out with uh, last. Was it the fantasy? Yeah, the 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 frostborn horrors. This is. Let me just pull it out here. These guys are unbelievable. I mean, just I love these models. I just wish they had this. I would have 
totally gone for the frost uh, burn horrors if they had stats in OPR already. And I'm f- feeling I'm going to regret not getting it. But uh, yeah, these these sculpts, these models are amazing. And um, so, yeah, I give the nod to them, even though they don't have the um, uh, the stats quite yet. Uh, but they have it all. You know, they, you do pay a little extra for them, but I think it's worth it to get the, the quality of models and uh, the quality of imagination that goes into it. They have modules for D&D. So if you're into D&D, um, this is uh, a really good company. Okay. All right. Uh, negatives. They don't have the army books. I already mentioned that. All right. So best models for Age of Fantasy original army. This one, I chose Dragon Trapper's Lodge. And there's there's a neck-and-neck neck battle for me here. They're, it, they are a star um, contributor to OPR, as well as my very, very close second, Mammoth. Um, I, it, there's still a part of me that thinks a Mammoth should be here. But Dragon Trapper's Lodge, it, they, uh, they, they get the nod because of this. One dollar for the D&D module. Um, they get... $12 for D&D content, which means you get models, you get uh, um, you get uh, the, the module, then, and, and they, they really world build. They build in maps, they have all sorts of, of things that uh, went into the imagination of the world that they're building. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, $12 for the fantasy army. Now, it looks like they take three months to give you a full army, which is good. Um, So basically $36 for an army. But if you want all of it, $18. And that's that's better than Arch Villain. So you do get a little bit better value or you you don't have to pay as much, get a little bit more bang for your buck uh, because you do get all the the fantasy stuff together. Um, However, no, I would have to say Arch Villain is better because it's $20, you get the sci-fi too. And oh, I kind of messed up there. However, merchant, this is where they beat everybody. Forty dollars for a merchant license. That's fantastic. So, yeah, I'll get to that a little bit later. But that's a, a really good deal. Most of uh, they have the most complete army. So when you're looking at the uh, the OPR and you see all the lists, they they've got the most. Uh, now a lot of people do have a lot of list as well but they have a third of an army or a half of an army uh, that there's I, I consider a full army at least 15 units and so when you have a bunch of armies with eight or nine units in it I don't consider that a full army all right so best deal for grimdark this is where you know you're trying to be budget conscious and you want to uh, still, get a subscription, you you still want to participate, get a few models, kind of dip your toe into it and try it out and see, is this all really worth it? You're going to get as crazy as as somebody like me. And so for Grimdark Future, I chose Cyberforge Miniatures. And the reason being is that they are right now, I don't know if it's still available, but $7 early bird. Uh, That is a really good deal for uh, every month to pay. Uh, this, you know, you're going to get a bang for your buck. Other models are included to help you. They, they give you, so let me, uh, pull this up here. Cyberforge. So Cyberforge, let's see. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a subscriber to them. So, but what they do is they give you, and this is like on the, on the fantasy side for Titan Forge. But let me pull up uh, January here. Okay, so in January, you have, I'm guessing these are the Black Templars. You get a good amount of Space Marines, let's say. Then you get some of these models that you can use for a science fiction role-playing game. And then they have some spaceships and so forth. They don't give you any modules. There's no rules behind it. It's just models to just have fun with and, and come up with something on your own. So you do get a, quite a bit for your money. Uh, and they do have a skirmish game, which goes along with this. 
Um, actually, I think it's this, the Cyberforge. I don't know. Uh, I'm a subscri I just started subscribing uh, because I wanted to get these Space Marine models. And last year, or last, yeah, last year in December, they had the uh, Salamanders, which looked pretty cool. So I grabbed those, and uh, and that was it. So I don't know what they're doing next month. It looks like they're going to be doing um, like Mongol Space Marines. I don't know. So if you like, yeah, they they remind me a little bit of Daka Daka, but and they're kind of all over the place too, like Daka Daka is right now. But it looks like they are doing certain things on purpose. They're not just giving you random models. They're giving you a whole bunch of you know, um, Black Templars, let's say, in that month, or Salamanders. They're not giving you a bunch of random models like Daka Daka is currently. Like, again, I have to stipulate Daka Daka may go back to their old system, which was awesome, and that's, that's why I, I, I talk about them now. Anyway... Let's get back over here. Uh, they jump around a little too much, and uh, that's why they're they're not the best. But they do get you know if you get that early bird deal, you're going to do very well. All right, best deal for Age of Fantasy. I went with Titan Forge. So they got the forges here. Uh, Titan Forge. They are ten dollars a month. You basically get a third to a half of an army. The figures for an army, uh, you get you get stat blocks and figures, extra figures for <coughs> excuse me for your uh, um, uh, let's see. So let's let's look over here. So we've got uh, basically tomb kings, and you got all these these models that come through. But then, at the end, when you get through all these models, and this, this reminds me a lot of what you get in OPR, uh, and they are very, right now, they're, they're trying to stick to what OPR has. However, once you get through, and let's, they give you a lot. You know, they give you a lot for your money. In addition to all this, now they give you some uh, of these models, which are for role-playing. And so you get a lot of options for the different role-playing. In addition, they'll give you uh, stat uh, stat blocks for your D and D adventure, so you get a lot for your money. You know, on, on the month you get basically a third of an army. Usually, what they do is they'll give you a very strong, at least a seventy percent discount on any part of an army you don't have yet that's in the past. And so, and you know, I believe it's sixty dollars for each release. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, so Titan Forge bundles, come on internet. All right. So yeah, so $60, you get 50, 50% off if you're just a member. So that brings down 30. And so for instance, I got the Everdark Elves last month and they gave me, I think it was 70% off. So I got it for $18, the previous one, which you're not even paying double. So I, I was pretty pleased with um, with what I got there. Although there are some units missing, this is the weakness of Titan Forge right now, is that they're incomplete armies. Uh, I, I looked at my Everdark Elves. I thought I got the whole army because every all these other armies they just have two releases. Sometimes they go back to back, like the uh, the Tomb Kings right now are going back to back. January and February they're coming out. And I thought you would get the whole army doing that, and that would be amazing. If you get the whole army in two months, but there were some units missing from the Everdark, and I'm assuming, and I looked at the Sylvan Elves, the Wood Elves, they have a couple of units missing. It looks like they're supposed to be in three releases, and the big problem is you don't know when those releases are coming. They don't give you a uh, schedule like OPR or... Um, Highland Miniatures is another thing I liked about Highland Miniatures. They gave you a schedule of what you are getting when. You know, I, I know that uh, Bretonians are going to come on January, February for Highland Miniatures, and then they're going to have a, a month of orcs and then two months of goblins, and then it looks like high elves are coming after that. We can see way down the road, and I really appreciate companies that that are open. You know, OPR has a roadmap. They tell us a few months out of what's coming. And uh, I really do appreciate when 
when companies are open, and it's okay, you know, they can have a, you know, have, after three months, it, you know, subject to change. It's it's okay. I I don't mind. I just would like to know what they're working on, uh, so I can start getting excited for it. And so that that's the only thing that pulls me back from Titan Forge is that they don't have really complete armies as of yet, and there's no way to know when they're going to complete it. So, getting back over here. Uh, they have stat blocks for your D&D &D, um, uh, adventures that you can use. Uh, they have the most armies out currently. So if we look over here, you could just see, look how many of, of the armies. They, Death Knights, these are the um, Chaos Warriors, Animal Folk Beastmen, um, Lost Crusader, I think that's the Angels. But I know you can't see it too well. It's Midnight Goblins over here, Dwarves, um, Orcs, it looks like um, the wild orcs. <clears throat> Dragon Empire looks pretty cool. Vampires, they got Skaven over here. Um, Scarlet Crusade, I think, is Empire or Vampire Hunters. Scarlet Crusade, and no, that's that's Empire. And you got the Wood Elves, you got the Chaos Dwarves, you got Bretonians. Again, this is only one release and it's incomplete. Uh, demons. High Elves are almost complete. Again, they have two releases over here. So they just have a lot of armies. Um, so, uh, but there's no pre-made adventure that you see. They, they don't have a module. They just have stat blocks that, you know, arch villain, uh, um, mammoth, and uh, what was the other one? Um, gosh, what was after Archvillain? We had uh, Dragon Trappers, right? So, uh, yeah, so the Dragon Trappers, they have a module and all this stuff. They put a lot of effort, whereas uh, Titan Forge, I, I don't see modules. Maybe there, there is, and I just missed it. But... Um, you know, and if I missed it, it's not totally my fault. There's, you know, Mammoth does a great job of laying it all out there. And so I was able to, at least my brain was able to comprehend them a lot better than the other companies. Uh, and I haven't even gotten to them yet. So let's see what comes up next. So, yeah, you don't have the pre-made adventure that you see in other companies. Uh, armies are incomplete as of recording. So let's go to best deal if you also like Dungeons and Dragons. And I went with Mammoth Factory. And the reason being is that you you pay $3 for the D&D &D stuff. You get the module. You get 2D mo uh, models. So you don't even have to buy the miniatures. Let's say you don't have a printer. And this is what OPR understood about people is that maybe they're not ready or can't afford to get a printer, uh, a 3D printer, but they have a regular printer. And so you can just print out 2D models and just get playing. Just learn the rules, get into it, no commitment. You know, you don't feel bad about if you give it up or it's just too much or life changes on you. It allows people to enter into the hobby a lot easier. And so I do appreciate companies that do that. And so for $3, you get all everything you need to play the adventure. Fantastic. Love that about them. $10 for the Fantasy Army. That's pretty standard that I'm seeing. $14 for both the d, &D stuff and the Fantasy Army. So it reminds me a lot of Dragon Trappers. A little bit more expensive than Dragon Trappers. This is where I think they... Um, that's why they didn't win in the other category. And they are the easiest to get into. Like I said, they... they uh, they're, my brain just works when I'm seeing their instructions and I'm seeing how everything's laid out on the um, on the screen that they have. So let's let's take a quick look here. So yeah, they have the mammoth, rampaging mammoth. And what's interesting about the 14 for both is that right now this is early bird. This is why I'm guessing if you get this and this separately, it's cheaper than this, even though it's the same thing pretty much. It, there is one more thing here that you get to see things a little bit earlier or something, uh, but that's that's it. And they do have slots remaining for being a merchant. Um, 
Another reason why I think Dragon Trappers beat the mouse is because they have a lot of complete armies. Right now, as of what I'm talking about, they are just finishing up their first complete army, I want to say, or their second complete army. So they're a little bit far, further behind the Dragon Trappers when getting armies, which is why I didn't put them in the other category. However, everything seems to work out real well. They do it consecutively. They... Um, they give you the PDF. So, for instance, if you buy the pack here for that month, it's $70. They give you a 40% discount, which brings it to, what, $42? And then if you were to do the same thing on Dragon Trappers, it comes out to $35, but you don't get the D&D &D module. So, yeah, uh, and the D&D &D module is $12 going down to nine dollars i want to say or uh eight dollars somewhere around there so i mean you're basically paying the same amount that they're they're comparable they're almost one-to-one -one compatible um but i do like that i was able to see their their uh, they gave a sample of their module i liked it very much um i thought it was it was very nice that they would give you a sample module that was very it was old um, I could probably find it down here, but it was really neat. It was a nice little side mission type of adventure. Did a great job. It wasn't just stat blocks. They gave you a whole story, and it was a story that you can do in one night. It's just one of those one-off adventures. It's not a big campaign, so I, I like that. And you can make it a campaign because when you have the armies going alongside the... Um, you know, these armies are, are going to make appearances in your Dungeons & Dragons adventures. So it can be a campaign over a course of a couple months. So I thought that was really, really cool. And so if you're into D&D, &D, um, I think, you know, it's tough because Dragon Trappers, Archvillain, I didn't, I just didn't get to see their samples. And, and maybe I missed it, but <clears throat> I did get to see... Um, mammoth and so i liked it and i can recommend it without reservation i'm not taking a guess they're good at at doing the modules so uh, i appreciate that from them all right uh you don't have to pay a lot to get great D, &D content you can pay that three dollars and be off on your way to play dungeons and dragons which is why they get the nod here and uh all right so a next category best for kids and i made a whole video on them and my selection is Dice Heads. Dice Heads, their game is called Zuntalis. It's $5. They have their own role-playing content. It is uh, completely different than Dungeons & Dragons, uh, much more simplified. It's just basically to get you into you know, role-playing, understanding what role-playing is really about. Too many people believe that role-playing is about learning the rules and manipulating and winning the game and, and doing moves and so forth. Um, but when you play role-playing, in my opinion, correctly, you're telling a story together, you're interacting, you're, you're pretending to be somebody, not just in your mind, but out loud, where, you know, you make voices or you, you, uh, you know, emote your emotions and, 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 and make faces and, yeah, it's just, that's real role-playing in, in my opinion. And, Dice heads allow you to do that because it's very simple uh, and you don't have to worry about too much about the stats. You just go and you do things, you interact with the characters and just have fun with it. It's $9 for the role-playing and game content. So yeah, it's the game content, you don't get a whole lot. You usually get uh, um, an army and then some bad guys that go along with the... Uh, with the uh, um, with the role playing, so for instance, one month there was a, a spider scenario. You go up and you you try to fight um, a queen spider and all its little spiderlings, and you cooperate in the game, the skirmish game. But in the role playing, there's a whole scenario behind the whole campaign behind it. So you do it doesn't look like it. They, they're good at minimalizing what they what they give you and what you actually get. 
So you do get a lot for your money. It just doesn't feel like it at first, but once you start playing it, you're like, yeah, this is, and you use everything. You're gonna use all the models. When I look at these other uh, companies, uh, there's a lot of models I don't make. But when I, you know, when I get dice heads, when I get Zuntala stuff, I print everything. You know, there's there's no wasted STLs. Every month you print out an army, which is four figures, and that's it. And then you've got uh, the role playing. You might print. You might not print out all the role playing characters, but you will be playing, uh, printing out all the enemies that you'll be fighting in skirmish uh, collectively or in the role playing game. So. Yeah, you're not wasting a lot of STLs there. You, every penny you're spending, you're going to get something out of it. $28 for merchant is the cheapest for merchant I have seen. So if you are thinking about making money and you, you know, there's lots of kids at your store, um, you know, they play Pokemon, you're, you're, you're not a magic store, you're more of a Pokemon store, this is probably where you want to want to start. Uh, it's kids safe. You, know, you don't die in the in these games. You respawn. So you're playing. You only have four figures on each side. When you're doing a skirmish, you get knocked out. You respawn back at your respawn spawn point. So you know there's it's it's more like tag rather than you know combat to the death. So I think that's as a, a parent. You know, when I had little kids, I, I wasn't so sure. I wanted them to get into things exploding, people shooting and stabbing each other. Even though that does happen here, they just kind of pop and go back to their respawn point. <clears throat> and so I find that much more kid-friendly. Uh, the models are pretty easy to print. Let me pull them up here. All right, so... Yeah, they're usually pretty chunky and robust. Um, they're very easy to paint, in my opinion, uh, because the details are very obvious. Uh, there's good spacing between details. So even though there are a lot of details, it's easy to, you know, you paint dark gray here and then a lightish, you know, dark white, like a light gray here, let's say. And then you work on the sword. And, and so, I mean, I just found them much easier to paint than any other figure. So again, really good for kids. And, um, you know, when you, you get, <clears throat> when you get your module, you get some terrain, you get some, you know, your, your army for the, uh, the month, you get a scenario, you get uh, role playing, um, yeah, so, and if you have to go back, their sales are very good if you ever catch them on their sales. And you can just pick and choose which models you want. Again, you want an army, you just pick four armies. And their uh, welcome packet comes with two full armies, rabbits and, what was the other one, foxes. They, they have cards that, you you know, the stat cards that you could print out and put in front of you. Again, it makes it very easy for kids to get into. They don't have to make an army although you can there are rules for army building but usually you just pick the fox clan and you put the foxes out there and the four foxes run around and the stats are are relatively the same i mean rogues are going to be pretty much the same across the board the fighters are going to be across the same across the board as far as stats are concerned so if you know your army the stats of your army then you pretty much know the stats of your enemy's army so it's easy to keep track you know there's there's less chance for somebody to cheat or accidentally cheat because they misinterpreted their their stats because the other person pretty much already knows their stats. All right, so getting back over here, Army Building Simple, I already covered that, has its own skirmish game. It, they do have an, one army. They're not totally dedicated to OPR, which is... <coughs> but the skirmish game is much simpler. And as simple as OPR is, this game is even more simple. Again, perfect for getting kids or people that are not normally inclined to play miniature games. And you just want them to play and have fun. And and maybe they like to paint, but they don't like to play. They'll play this one. This this one is, is a lot easier to get into. Like I said, it's mildly compatible over. They got one army, and it's really just a mishmash, a hodgepodge of units. Uh, I didn't see them put too much of an effort uh, to getting to OPR, but they are there. They are one of the uh, creators that 
are involved, you'll see them on that, that sheet. All right, so now this one's a little bit different because this is best for kids who like Age of Fantasy or somebody who likes animals, and that is Blue Wyvern. And Blue Wyvern is, um, well, let me just pull up their stuff here. So they're going to be going into Mecca stuff here, but they have been doing consistently, you know, like samurai rabbits, samurai, you know, a lot of samurai stuff, Bushido. Uh, if you look at their, their thing here, you can see lots of rabbits and then dinosaurs. I don't know what that is. Frogs, I guess. I, I don't know. But you can see lots of animals. It looks like uh, raccoons, I'm thinking. Yeah, scrap raccoonus. So they've got a lot of, and they're nice models. You know, they're, they, they are the tween version or teen version of Zuntala. So if you are set, you don't want to learn any other games, you just want to play um, OPR, then this is it. They have their, their armies in the, um, let me see if I can find it here now. They have their armies. Let me pull up creators. Here we go. <clears throat> so first creature collection. So they've got 19 units. I consider that a full army. And they've got all their stats in there. So I'm not sure they're totally organized, but they're getting there. And they, you have an army that you can get started on for Blue Wyvern. So I like them um, for that, that respect that, you know, people that don't want to get into demons or anything really crazy, they like animals, they don't want to use humans, then they might be the one. Uh, 200, uh, excuse me, $2.50 for one model with its options is really just to get your feet wet, see if you, you like to do it. $7 for the full monthly release, uh, $34.50 for the merchant tier. Again, reasonably priced. They don't have as much as some of the other companies that I've seen. But they do, you know, that you can get into them for not too much money. So it's it's one of those budget options. It's a step up from dice heads, lots of animals. They do have D and D stat blocks, so they do have that if you're into D and D and want to move into Age of Fantasy. And they I haven't printed them, but they do look fairly easy to print. Not a lot of small bits and pieces or skinny legs or anything like that. So that's that's something I look for. Um, makes it easier to print. All right. Best for people who like aliens and weird creatures. <laughs> this is definitely a very specialized category. And I give it to Fleshcraft Studio. Uh, Fleshcraft Studio is $2 for one model. They're very much like Blue Wyvern. Uh, $7 is the early, <coughs> early bird. And then when you, they run up, I think there was one left. Let's see if it's still there. Um, one remaining layer. Let's refresh it, see if it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. So they got one remaining left on the uh, Disciple, which is basically their, their full $9 a month thing. It's just that you get a discount. Uh, and so they, um, they do not like to make good guy models. If you like things that look evil, this this is your your company. They almost I, I think I have yet to see a good guy or even a neutral type of, of army from them. Uh, they have two full original armies so far on OPR. Um, but it looks like it's a one man operation and sometimes he can't get out things on, on time. I mean, biggest kind of OPR can't get things on time sometimes, but it looks like he sometimes has to suspend the campaign, if I'm not mistaken, as I was reading through. So let's take a look here. Um, it was it was sometime last year. Let's see. I mean, it does look like he has, but I remember there, there, there was talk of pauses Let's see, September, maybe I'm wrong. October, yeah, he's got something coming out every month. 
Maybe it was just the notifications. So, um, but you could see here, just looking at these models, yeah, these are, yeah, the, gruesome. Yeah, the, he he really wants a he's rivaling Arch Villain for how he makes his models. And uh, we could see here some Skaven. I mean, it looks like undead Skaven. And uh, they are not happy people here, not happy beings. So he's got aliens, he's got monsters, he's got demons. Uh, vampires, I'm guessing. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, you like the bad guys, then Fleshcraft is is your jam. Just puts a lot of nasty looking stuff. Very intimidating, I would say. So <clears throat> that's that's if that's you, I'd go with Fleshcraft. They're first of all, they're very cheap. Um in in the sense that, that you can get them for less money, but you do get a lot for your money. It's just do you have the um the taste for them is it is this your your style if it is I, I totally recommend this it's not my style but i'm sure there's plenty of people out there who love uh what he's doing over there all right so best for making money i broke this down into a couple things if you're just starting out dragon trappers you get the most content for your dollar forty dollars a month for a merchant is a really good deal you're getting D, &D content you're getting um, you're getting the uh, uh, army for fantasy. So, yeah, very, very good deal there. <clears throat> if you're going for kids, I would go with Dice Heads over Blue Wyvern um, because you're probably not going to be playing OPR for the most part, or at least this would be some sort of gateway game. And so, and Dice Heads is cheaper. They're easy to print, easy to paint, you know, you, your Pokemon store, I would go with Dice Heads, to be honest. And if you're in the big time, you want to make tons of money, you know, you're, you're, you've got several printers in your store, and you are distributing all over, and people want really cool models, I would go with Arch Villain. Yes, it's $100 a month. Big, you know, like I said, big time. you got to have a big operation to uh, hang with those guys. All right, so finally... Best overall. All right, who who do I think is ahead of the game here? A lot of factors I look into. Do you get uh, a good amount of models? You know, or I think everybody's quality is is up there. So, um, do you get Dungeons and Dragons content? Do you know, do you get um, you know just a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, no matter which direction you go in, do they um, release armies in a timely manner so that you have a full army after, you know, I, I kind of do the OPR thing. If you start an army and you don't finish it within six months, then you don't, you can't qualify for best overall. And, and that's why I think Titan Forge doesn't quite get here. Um, there's, you know, the nominees basically were Mammoth, um, who was the other one? Uh, Dragon Trappers, uh, the Highlands. Daka Daka used to be, so, but they're not, so I couldn't really consider them. But basically, I wanted an army to be completed within six months. I wanted them to have uh, the stats on OPR, whether it's original or not. Uh, as long as I can make an army in the OPR then this is that this company qualifies. So I chose Dragon Trappers Lodge. And this was tough because I wanted I like mammoths so much. I'm thinking about joining up with them. Um, but I do have to say Dragon Trappers, they do get the nod over Mammoth because they have more full armies at the moment. So if you like the Draconis, and I do from Mammoth, then you go with Mammoth. But if there's an, you don't like the samurai that the dragon trappers there's a couple armies that they do have their own dragon army and other armies uh, from a few months ago you can go and get them so uh, they complete armies in three months 
They complete the armies in succession, so you don't, you know, that that's where they beat Highland Miniatures. Highland Miniatures does get their their um, armies done pretty quickly, and they're acceptable. But there's disruptions. You know, you'll have Bretonians and then orcs and then Bretonians and then high elves, and then you know it, it, they flip flop back and forth, um, which is okay. Yeah, I have no problem. You know, I like Highland Miniatures. Again, I might be joining them. I'm, I'm still in limbo of who I want to join here, but. Um, yeah, they, they do it in succession. So if you like an army, you know you stick with them for three months, and then you get to see what they do in the next couple months. Um, also, uh, if there's a couple months you don't like what they're doing, you can drop down to the $1 tier and still keep your loyalty months, uh, as well as getting a D&D &D module so that you still get something. I mean, Mammoth, you, you drop down to $3, so that's close, but that's an uh, early bird. This is, this $1 is not an early bird, from what I can tell. I mean, maybe I read it wrong. But I thought that was the, the nicest thing of all of them. That, that put me over the edge, over Mammoth, uh, by doing that $1 tier. Just, you know, they can see, okay, this army, you know, we're, we're kind of barking up the wrong tree. Uh, they want this kind of army, so they, they'll focus on, you know, it helps them in their marketing. They don't get blindsided by a lot of things. So, um, yeah, so I, I like that a lot. $40 to be a merchant, I believe, is a steal for what they give you. I think it's fantastic. And, yeah, if I was, if I was trying to make money, <coughs> didn't have a lot of money, wasn't really sure if I wanted to do it. Archvillain is just kind of out of reach. Uh, Dragon Trappers is, is a good way to go. Uh, obviously, if you're into just Warhammer, you're not going to want Dragon Trappers, and that's not really what this video is about. It It's really focused on one-page rules. Um, and so if you only want to play Warhammer, obviously you're not going to pick Dragon Trappers. But if you are playing OPR, uh, they're definitely worth a look, especially if you play Dungeons & Dragons. Um, but Mammoth... Mm, basically a tie. <laughs> I just, I really like Mammoth. I like how they, they do their, their operation. But uh, because Dragon Trappers had more and their, their pricing, I think, was a little bit more friendly, uh, I went with them. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if I'm right, I'm wrong. Um, just uh, be nice, and uh, I'll catch you in the next time.